If you look at my chart checklist, in the previous section with the bubble chart, we've done um, the two first layer. We dealt with the data layer of getting the data, set it and process the data. We dealt with the view layer of integrating the React lifecycle hooks. We used the um, React um, class instead of function component that we showed you before. And then I showed you how to draw the chart and how to style the component. In this section, we're going to deal with the user interaction. We're going to deal with the transition and the handling of user gesture. So if you look at the final result, we want to be able to um, click any of the bubble and we want to interact with it. So I just put a simple interaction that it just shows the name um, and then you can handle it however you want. And then if you hit the animation, um, we want to be able to change the data and to animate our component. So we still need to create some kind of button that will change um, the data and we need to create another button that will um, after you change the data we'll be able to also animate um, our bubble. We'll start off from the app TSX and the next thing we can do is we can add um, handlers to handle both a change of data and to select um, the key so we can display that. So to change the data um, we can add after a state a new function and let's call it change data and since we already as you can see here we have the data as D as the object and then in the data we're slicing it to the first element and the tenth element so to change that data um, what we can do is we can just set the data state and do a sort and inside the sort we can put an inline method that will just create some kind of random calculation and um, this will sort the list so this way it's gonna go take the D object and just pick up a random um, element to to sort instead of uh, using the same one um, and then so that method will do that change and then the next thing we want to do is we want to be able to um, to display the name of the bubble to do that um, what we can do is we can create a function and we can pass that function to our component and then the component can call that method so I'm going to create a method and I'm going to call it selected key handler and it's going to expect a key which is really the name of the bubble and then what we're going to do for here I'm not going to do anything I just want to see it working so I'm just going to put an alert and show the key and ESLint it's not doesn't like alert with the rules that I set, so I'm just gonna add. I'm gonna suppress those errors, okay? And then in our component, we can just add those two events. So what we can do is we can um, first set the selected. We'll call it selected circle, and I can bind it to the selected key. Um, handler and then I'm going to need to set that up at the component um, prop so go to bubble chart and at the bottom we have the interface and we can add the um, you know the um, the method I'm creating and let's call it, we called it the selected circle and the type is going to be um, really the same it has to match the function so it's, it needs to be the key or I can call it the content type string so this will match the constant function you could see okay um, and then if we want to switch the data I'm gonna switch the data from the um, the parent component 
So what we can do is we can add a button and I'll use material UI for that. And for the button, um, I can give it some properties. I can set the variant to be contained. And the color, I'm going to set the color to the default color. This is all material UI. Um, and then on a click event, Um, we can put an inline fat error method and just call this method that we created which will sort the data and since the data is binding to the bubble chart really we don't need to do anything else it's gonna happen um, automatically and then for the button um, I'm gonna give it a name that's called change data then um, I want to give it a fixed location so what I can do is I can create a class I can create a class name and let's call it app bun fix so I want to put it in a fixed position um, and then if we go to the app sas file we can add that style And I'm going to give it the fixed position. And I'm going to set the left size minus 100 pixel. And the top size is 60 pixel. This way it's going to be fixed a little bit to the um, left and 60 down from the top. And um, now we can test this. If you see, if I click the change data, the change data is happening, it's changing the bubbles, but um, I don't have any code to animate and reposition them. So we need to add that um, to our code. So when I'm clicking any of those uh, bubble, nothing happened because I don't, we haven't implemented that code yet. So let's implement both of those uh, features. Let's go back to the bubble chart. And in the bubble chart, if you remember, we have um, the method, the render bubble that handled the JSX code to draw the um, all the bubble element. And inside we have the circle and the text. So what we can do is we can add um, for the circle and for the text a method that if you click that, um, then we can actually call the parent component and we already said that in the props we set um, our method we called it select selected circle um, and then we can uh, pass the content this is the constant we created right here that holds the name of the bubble right and we can do the same thing for the text so if the user click the circle or the text we want to be able to handle that Take a look, if I click any of those bubbles, see, I'm able to get the label back to the parent component. I want to animate the bubble. We already created a function that does that, that animate bubble inside of the bubble chart. And what it does is, if you remember from the, from the previous section, it used the simulate position to use the force simulation with the collide on every tick until it's complete. So we already have all of that built in and all we have to do is we need to tie it into the code so what we can do is instead of a JSX of the render we can just add a tag and add the bun so I'm adding a tag here because um, the render needs to have one container so if I'm adding a bun I need to have a container and for the bun I can just go to app.tsx and I can copy that bun We'll use the same style. We're just going to make a couple of changes. First of all, the name, let's call it animate. And then for the method, we can call that this, that animate bubbles. And then um, for the fixed position, 
um, I can go into bubble chart SAS and I can create um, a fixed position and I'll put it on the top 25, 25 down and left 25. So I'll position it to the top. Let's set that as our um, class name. Now, if you remember when we did function component, we used the use effect and created uses that hook to in order to check if there's an update. For class, there is a, a component did update. So if you look at the React.js org docs, you'll see that there's the component did update that it's get invoked immediately after updating occur. So it's not being called on initial render when the component get mounted. It calls on every update so we can tie into this method and then we can handle an update and animate our component. So inside of our bubble chart, um, let's after the constructor we have the component did mount we can add the component did update you see when I start typing it show me the one that available and it shows the one that they deprecated right so it takes few things I don't need to use the snapshot what I do need to use is the previous prop and the previous state because we can use those um, in order to check if there was an update that happened and what we can do is we can put a statement that check if there was a change so what I can do is I can um, I can actually take my um, object the uh, bubble data so I can take the uh, previous um, prop bubble data and I can flatten it using the JSON stringify and I can compare that if it's different um, than the new one, right? So the new one um, is going to be JSON stringify. And I can use inside um, the new one, which is going to be this dot props because it got updated, bubble data. Um, so basically what I'm doing here, I'm comparing the previous bubble data with the new one to see if there's any change. Um, and if there's a change, um, what we want to do is we can... Um, there's a couple things we want to do. Um, the first thing we want to do is we want to set the force data because our animation is using the force data. It doesn't use directly our prop, if you remember, because we need to D3 needs to add the velocity, the X and Y. So we need to um, set the first data to this set first data and this props. And we also need to set the animation to animate the bubble. So there you go, just make sure there's no errors. I got double this, let's clean that up. And wait a few seconds, okay, I don't have any errors. Set refresh localhost. Um, once I change the data, let's see what's happening. Once I change the data, um, my force simulation is only um, it looks like it's not doing what I want it to do so we need to check the code there's got to be some kind of bug and um, where we want to really check it is how we're doing the simulation so look at the simulate position and we're orchestrating the interaction right we have the force look at the force I'm doing force X and force X twice so what we need to do is we need to change it. This is a typo. It has to be, we need, we want to do um, the strength of the simulation for the X and for the Y. Let's test it again. Refresh. Great. You see now when I'm um, doing the change animation, um, it's working correctly. And we can play around with those values. So go ahead and play with those values. You'll see. The reason that the animate doesn't work on its own because the ticks ended. So we can only click the animate once we change the data and it's still animating because otherwise we set the code that if the 
animation stopped we cannot reanimate it so you could see here really it's a great example how we can create our bubble chart interact with it change the data um, without um, really redoing or um, redrawing all the elements so it's really working in harmony and we're using the class component versus using function component if we want to switch it to a function component the only thing we really need to do is we need to handle those um, those react lifecycle events on our own instead of um, the component doing that one last thing I want you to notice is that I'm using the react pure component versus component the difference between them is that the react component has a method called um, component update and should component update um, allow us to hook into uh, the current change states of the prop and to change the default behavior of the re-render on every change so this get called if you just use the regular component this get called on every update and since we don't need that then we should use the react pure component because it's going to give us performance boost so you can either use the pure component or you can use the react um, memo and that will um, give you a performance boost if you don't need that um, lifecycle event.